ASEAN leaders wrap up three days of talks, successfully releasing a joint statement on the theme of Indonesia's 2023 chairmanship. Oh, that's the epicentrum of growth. Need a safe house, and ASEAN is on the track to be able to perform those roles. And after going through difficult process, we finally agreed the AS leaders' joint statement on epicentrum of growth. President Widodo says the bloc will not be held hostage by the crisis in Myanmar, adding they will continue peace efforts in the region. Mr Widodo also emphasised that every leader has the responsibility to defuse tensions and not to create new conflicts. On many topics were discussed during the high-level meeting, such as the ongoing crisis in Myanmar and territorial disputes in the South China Sea. The ASEAN leaders have now handed the chairmanship gavel to Laos, who will be leading the bloc in 2024. And Chani Vatvani joins us live from the ASEAN Summit in Jakarta with more details. Chani, uh, President Joko Widodo wrapping up the summit with uh, a presser in the last hour. Did we get any significant message out of it? Well, it was certainly a press conference that did not beat around the bush. And as you mentioned there, he told media attending that he stated to leaders in the forum how they all have a very big responsibility not to cause any new tensions and not to create new conflicts. And in fact, they should be decreasing uh, tensions. Now, he also said uh, that ASEAN was a safe house, as you rightly heard as well. He said that the world needed it. And he also said that he guarantees that if ASEAN is not able to manage uh, its rivalries, it will be it will be destroyed. He said if ASEAN is not able to manage its differences, it will be destroyed. He also said that ASEAN should not give in to what he called the currents of rivalry because, again, he said if they do, it will be destroyed. So he certainly cautioned uh, ASEAN uh, strong, strongly there against uh, joining uh, geopolitical rivalries and, of course, becoming a proxy as well to uh, superpower rivalries as well there. Now, he also said that the intense geopolitical tug of war reminded him of the G20 in Bali. However, he candidly said that he thanked God that leaders were able to come together come to a consensus and produce a statement after, of course, what he said was a long and difficult process. Uh, but all was not bleak. Now, he also said that ASEAN, uh, as you heard earlier, had been on the right track uh, to, able, to be able to carry out this particular role to become an epicentrum of growth. He also said that they continue to become a contributor to stability and peace. And we also know that some key documents produced at this 43rd ASEAN Summit include the Concord Four. Uh, we also have the foundation for the preparation of the ASEAN Vision 2045. We also know that EV deals and downstreaming industry uh, signed and emphasized during this uh, summit as well. And China, of course, uh, ASEAN does in face its own internal challenges, principally at this point in Myanmar. Uh, did the bloc manage to come to any consensus on tackling that particular crisis? Well, where Myanmar is concerned, he said that ASEAN will continue uh, the implementation of the five-point consensus. They will continue their efforts where Myanmar is concerned. And, of course, he also talked about the formation of the Troika mechanism. Now, the Troika mechanism is, of course, it consists of the country uh, holding the position of chairmanship, the country before, uh, the, as in the previous chair, and, of course, the chair the next chair as well. So all of these countries coming together to manage or rather tackle or engage with Myanmar so that there is continuity and therefore no one country has to go about it alone. So it remains to be seen how this Troika mechanism is all going to play out and we'll certainly be keeping a very close eye on these developments. And thanks for keeping an eye out on those for us. Chani Bhavani live from Jakarta.